So it's been a while since I did my devlog series Road to 1 Million with Game Development, but I was gone for a good reason. And that is I was fighting off the hackers of my YouTube channel who managed to hijack it. But no worries, I prayed to God that something bad happens to them and uh, well, you can see how that turned out. So don't mess with me, okay? Now that we have that out of the way, I've been working on two commercial games for the past two months and I can't believe it's been two months since we published Spooky Ninja and we gathered so much feedback from you guys that we're going to use to improve the game, which is going to be amazing, but more on that in another video. Anyways, the first game that I was working on is called Block Slice Ball, which is a puzzle game where you basically slice pieces inside of the level to make the ball fall down on the cube and that will signalize that the level is finished, cleared, whatever you're going to call it, okay? I do not care. And if you're wondering how I managed to implement the slicing in the game, well, that's a combination of Newton's third law with relativity rule from Einstein with a slight touch from Beethoven's third symphony. I'm just kidding. I just downloaded an asset called Sprite Slicer that is available in the asset store. It's a very easy to use tool for things like slicing, so if you need choppa choppa choppa, the tool is very easy to use and it's very cheap. So link to that tool will be in the description below if you think you can use it for, you know, your own good deeds. The difficult part of this game was creating the levels and making them playable. And this honor I left to Ahmed because why should I bother creating the hard part of the game when I can simply push it to somebody else to do it for me like a true game developer. Just kidding, but yeah, it was hard to create the levels and connecting all of that together to make them playable. Now, this game, even though it's not Cyberpunk 2077... <laughs> what the hell is this? This dude has a gun in his head. Oh yeah. <laughs> it is more optimized than Cyberpunk though. I was thinking how I can reduce the level loading time. Because usually what people do, they create scenes for every single level. But it occurred to me that I can simply create prefabs, you know, a parent empty game object, and inside I can put all the level parts to form the level. And then I can simply load or instantiate those prefabs over and over again. This way I don't have to clutter the build window with a gazillions of scenes and having to load them every single time we go to a new level and of course instantiate all the scripts that control the gameplay and so on and so forth. This way everything is instantiated once at the beginning, so the gameplay stuff, and then I simply load the levels, instantiating them on the go when we need them. Now, I think that this way is a lot more efficient than what people usually do, but I have yet to confirm this because I didn't test it on my mobile device, so I will test it and I will inform you. But if I don't say anything about that, that it's a bad method or whatever, that means I'm a genius, it worked, and... <laughs> The reward system we implemented for this game is stars that you earn when you pass a level. And how many stars you gather is the progress you made in the game. This is of course for the first version of the game. We will gather feedback when we publish it and see what people like and don't like. And based on that, we will either change things in the game or leave them as they are. I've also implemented in-app purchase in this game, which is my second monetization strategy besides from ads, of course. And the in-app purchase system, purchase, in-app purchase system is simple. You can skip one level and you can skip 10 levels. And of course you can remove ads, but basically nobody buys that. YouTube Premium knows that better. <laughs> Anyways, if you want to skip one level, that is 99 cents. And if you want to skip 10 levels, that is 4.99. Which means that if you skip 10 levels, you pay twice less than if you would, if you were skipping levels one by one. I believe that when people get addicted to a game, but they can progress it, they don't mind spending a few bucks to make progression in their game if they, they are already enjoying the game. But then again, this is for the first version, we will see what the feedback will be. Maybe I'm smart, maybe my plan is stupid and I'm not so smart as I think I am, or maybe I am smart, but then again, if I'm smart, how did those hackers manage to hack my channel? But then again, we know where they are now. <laughs> So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and got you there. You thought that I'm going to end the video without showing you the other game? Of course not. So let's take a look at the other game, which is called Gravity Control. We got inspired for this game from a template I found online. 
The idea is simple, you have platforms and player jumps on them. The platforms are spinning, rotating, moving and so on and so forth and the gravity field is pushing the player towards the platforms or pushing him away from the platforms. And the goal of the game is to jump from one platform to another collecting gems while avoiding obstacles that are laid out in the whole level. As well as in Block Slice Ball, one of the hardest parts for this game was creating the levels. And I used the same approach as I did in Block Slice Ball, which means I'm putting all my levels into prefabs and I'm going to load them one by one. And this way is a lot easier to manage, optimize and handle as opposed as if you were using scenes for every single level that you have. But the most hard the most hard, the hardest part, not the most hard, the most hard is not a word. The hardest part in this game was making it look the same on all mobile devices. Now, making your game look the same on all screen sizes is nearly impossible with the knowledge that we indie devs have. Of course, there are a lot of ways how you can tackle this. And I've talked about one of the ways in one of my videos, I will probably look at them here or here or down below. And I talked about using some scripts in that video, but what we ended up doing is we got an asset from the asset store called camera fit screen handle, something like that. I will put the link down below. And that asset can set the fixed size for the camera and aspect ratio, which means then that you can build your game for that size of the camera, because no matter what is the screen size where your game is being played, that main area that you define with that script will always be visible. So it's a very useful asset and it's a very cheap one that can help you a lot with your mobile game development and you only buy it once and then you can reuse it for every single project you have. Anyways, if you're interested, link to that asset will be in the description below. Another asset that we use for this game is called Dot Tween Pro, which is a very useful asset that lets you animate your game objects in the ways you cannot possibly imagine. So you can animate the rotation, movement, scale, and so on and so forth, which can turn out into millions of combinations that you can use for your game. And this is what we did. We used Dotwing Pro to animate the obstacles and to animate the platforms where the player will land on, but they will test his ability to stay on them because they are moving in weird and unpredictable ways. Plus the gravitational field is also challenged the player to, you know, stand on those platforms. So that's the really fun part of the game. If you want to check out this asset and maybe use it for your own project, link to that asset will also be in the description below. For this game, I also implemented ads and in-app purchasing. And at the time of this recording, the idea for in-app purchase is to be able to unlock new characters. But I'm also thinking about adding the same thing I added in Block Slice Ball, which is the ability to unlock new levels and worlds because this game is based on many worlds and planets that you will have to explore. But then again, this all will be testing. We will publish the game, look at the feedback from people and then decide what to do from there. So this is what I've been up to in the past two months. And of course, I will let you know when I publish these games, which is very close. I believe in a week or two, both of these will be published so that you can show a little bit love and support to my work and download and play the games and of course, enjoy them. Anyways, as always, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video.